Hi everyone, this is Shane Musai and you're watching Musai Tech. Now in this video, we'll be doing an F-test, right? Now what is an F-test and why do we want to use an F-test? Well, if you look at the same question that we was working on previously in the other two um, examples, the previous videos, we test to see if beta is significant and we also test to see if gamma is significant in explaining the model. Now we may want to test the model as a whole or we may want to test to see if the expanded variables CS and DS are both simultaneously not explaining the model and that is specifically why we use an F-test to see if the two or how much ever expanded variables to see if they are all simultaneously not explaining the model. Some people may call the F-test a test for simultaneous nullity of the slope of the coefficients of explanatory variables. Now it's just a whole lot of confusing big words but it's really simple to calculate. We start here with the regression equation and we first state our null hypothesis and our alternative hypothesis. Our null hypothesis for the f-test is that the coefficients of our explanatory variables so in this case it's beta and it's gamma so alpha doesn't count. Alpha is simply the constant. So beta is one coefficient of expanded variable and gamma. So we, our null hypothesis says beta is equal to gamma which is equal to zero. Now if this is true it will mean that the model is insignificant. Right? So what this would mean if beta is equal to gamma which is equal to zero it would mean that both explanatory variables are simultaneously not explaining the model. Now our alternative hypothesis says not HO. What this means is that the model is significant. But we use the F-test to see whether or not we would reject HO or not. So the first thing we do is calculate our F statistic. And the formula for the F statistic is your mean squared regression over your mean squared error. And if you look back at the question, those values have already been calculated first and given to us directly from the mini tab output. So this is your mean squared regression number and this is your mean squared error number. So you just take your mean squared regression and divide it by your mean squared error and you would get your F stat. And this should be equal to 11.845. So this is our F stat or our F statistic. Now we need to calculate our critical value to see if our F star falls within the critical region. Right. So in order to calculate our critical value, we will need two things. We will need a degree of freedom and we'll also need an assumed level of significance. So we'll assume that alpha is equal to five percent since the question did not specify. For the F test we need two degrees of freedom. And the degrees of freedom takes the form of K and the other number we would need is N minus K minus one. Now you might be wondering well what is k, what is n, well we know what is 1. Well k is the number of explanatory variables. So if you look at our regression equation, there are only two explanatory variables. There is cs and there is ds. So there are two explanatory variables so therefore our value for k is 2. So our degrees of freedom, the first degree of freedom will be 2. And the next number we need is n minus k minus 1. And if you look at our question, we will see that there are 10 restaurants, so there are a sample of 10 restaurants. We know that n equals 10 minus k, we know that k is equal to 2 minus 1. So therefore our degrees of freedom are 2 and 7. Now an easier way to do it, luckily it, it doesn't always be the case, but luckily this mini tab output already gives us the degrees of freedom. So this um, degrees of freedom for regression would be k, so it would represent k, and this degrees of freedom here for the error would represent n minus k minus 1. So we have our degrees of freedom, we have our alpha. Next step is to look at our f table. So the f table is different from the z table which is different from the t table, different from the chi square table. The f statistic has its own table. Right, so we come across here to our f distribution or our f table and we notice two things. We notice that there is some degrees of freedom on top and there's some degrees of freedom on the left hand side. Now the degrees of freedom on top represents the degrees of freedom for the value k that we found which was 2 because there are two explanatory variables and degree of freedom to the left represents the degrees of freedom that represents the number n minus k minus 1 which we found to be 7. So we are looking for the number 2 on top and the number 7 on the left hand side. There are four numbers here. Each one of these numbers represents different levels of alpha. So 
the first number, so the one on top, represents alpha of 0 0.05, the second number represents an alpha of 0 0.025, and the third number represents an alpha of 0 0.01, while the fourth number represents an alpha of 0 0.001. Since we are looking for an alpha of 0 0.05, because we are assuming a 5% level of significance, we will be looking at the first number. Okay, so we have 7 on this side here, and we know the second column represents the number 2. So we're looking at 7, and we're looking at 2, so we're, we're looking somewhere here, and we'll take the first number, which is 4.74. Right, so now that we have our f critical value, we can sketch the f distribution. Now notice the f distribution is a little different from the normal distribution in t distribution since there's no negative f value. So it starts from 0 and it's only positive, right? So this is the f distribution shape and we'll draw our critical region. So our critical region would be above 4.74. So our decision rule says, if our f statistic is greater than our f critical value, then we reject the null hypothesis. Otherwise, we do not reject the null hypothesis. Um, we know that our critical region is 4.74, but what is our f statistic? Well, we calculate our f statistic before to be 11.845. So since this is increasing this way, our f statistic should fall somewhere here, 11.845. Therefore, according to our decision rule, we must reject the null hypothesis because our f stat is greater than our f critical value. Therefore, our decision is to reject each O, each O being our null hypothesis, and our conclusion is that the model is significant. So this is it for this video. I would like to thank you for watching the video, and if you like this video, it'll help you in any way. If you find it simple, make sure and like the video and hit the subscribe option if you haven't done so already. And also feel free to share the video with your friends and anybody who it may help. We now start, get ready day, set a bong start, meet we on the way, we lining up, ready to charge ahead, for what is not enough.